Huawei, founded in 1987, is a company among the most successful in China. Huawei has become one of the world's largest telecommunication companies. Reports are that in 2020, Huawei has made a whopping $136 billion in sales. In today's episode, we will discuss how an ex-military officer has changed the telecommunication industry across the globe by serving 3 billion people in 170 countries. One of seven children, Ren Zhengfei was born in rural Guizhou in 1944. With a dad who couldn't finish college and a mom who had a high school education, Ren spent his primary and middle school years in a remote mountainous town in Guizhou. Every year when it was time to pay the school fee, his mother would get nervous. He remembered his mother asking people if she could borrow money so that Ren's tuition could be paid off. His parents couldn't afford a t-shirt for Ren. He would wear a thick coat to school. A school that was paid for with borrowed money, he and his mother would often walk to school. During their walks, they would discuss the hardship of the family. The hardship of life at that time was bearable. The mental suffering was much worse than the physical pain. Because my father was being investigated, my younger siblings were denied admission to school again and again. After repeating 11th grade twice, Ren was finally accepted for college. His mom, in celebration, gifted Ren two shirts. Ren cried. He knew the struggle his parents had to go through to get the two t-shirts, but at the same time, he knew that his siblings were still out of clothes. Ren was the only child in his family to attend university. After graduation, he was employed in the civil engineering industry before joining the PLA as an engineer in 1974. Ren was a major in the PLA. During his time with the PLA, he helped build bridges and factories in temperatures below sub-zero. But then in 1983, PLA disbanded its entire engineering corps. Ren left the army and worked with oil corporation. Coming from a military background into civilian life proved to be much more challenging for Ren. He could not adapt. He was played by many. Many of his colleagues took Ren as a stepping stone. Many cheated and took away what was rightfully his. After jumping from one job to another, Ren was unable to find his place. Ren was 44 now dissatisfied after a number of failures. He tried again, in telecommunications. He went to his close five friends and asked them for a loan. After scraping about $4,000, he opened an office in a small apartment in Shenzhen. Ren was going against the already established Ericsson. Not only was Ericsson popular, but the competition in Shenzhen was big. 400 plus Chinese telecom manufacturers were based around the city. Huawei soon realized that with the capital they'd have, they didn't stand a chance. So instead of targeting big cities, Huawei focused on small towns and villages. Ren pushed employees to work long hours and do whatever it took to secure business. Being a regular reader, Ren studied many companies in the US. He realized that companies in the US focused heavily on R&D. So Huawei started to invest in R&D, pushing to create a technology that would bring them to the big leagues. I had to fight for the survival, spending 16 hours a day in the office. The more he spent in office, the less he had for his family. His mother would often write him letters asking him how he was doing, but Ren couldn't reply her back. Finally, he did manage to buy a ticket to visit his mother. He told his staff about his trip, but he did not tell his mother. He wanted to surprise her by knocking on the door in person. His visit to the city was not a secret. When he landed, Huawei employees picked him up from the airport, asking him to join them for a dinner with a very important client. Work had again called him. He flew back to Shenzhen without seeing his mother. This would happen year after year. The company slowly became profitable and popular. Leaders in China wanted Huawei to become a global leader in technology. Vice President Hu Jintao invited Ren to accompany him for a visit abroad. Ren was certain that on the way back, he would visit his parents. The visit with the vice president was successful. As Ren said his goodbyes to the vice president and boarded the plane to visit his parents, he received a call. The call was from the co-founder of Huawei, but this call had nothing to do with Huawei. He was told that his mother had come out of a shopping mall with bags of groceries and unfortunately a car had hit her. Who knows, maybe this grocery visit was to celebrate her boy returning back. Ren was at the airport, waiting for the storm to pass so that the flight could take off. Six hours later, Ren landed, only to find out that the injuries were severe and that the chances of her making it alive were very slim. When he finally saw her, she was laying peacefully on a hospital bed. It was as if she had never rested so much in her life. 
I really regret not giving my mother a call from abroad. To overcome this tragedy, he grilled himself into doing more work, longer hours. From his contracts through the vice president, in 1998, the China Construction Bank provided Huawei with $610 million in buyer's credit. And the next year, the company received another boost of $610 million from ICBC and the Bank of China. The money was used to bring down the expenses so that Huawei could charge less. By now, the dot-com bubble had burst. Investors and companies had lost millions, leaving enough space for the competitors to rise and shine. Huawei saw this as an opportunity to catch up, turning the technology gap into a level playing field. Huawei upped its budget for R&D, bringing better technology to the world. By 2000, Huawei went global. It was a slow start, with only 1% of revenue coming from outside of China. But from that 1% that was coming from outside, Huawei went to the markets that the global giants of the time ignored. Africa, the Middle East, Southeast Asia. By the time 4G arrived, Huawei had become a global leader. In 2004, Huawei obtained a $10 billion credit line from the state-owned China Development Bank and $600 million from the Export-Import Bank of China to fund its global expansion. That helped Huawei undercut competitors' bids by as much as 70% and offer vendor-financed loans. Places like Nigeria received $200 million in loans from the China Development Bank in 2004 to buy Huawei equipment. In the first quarter of 2019, Ren Zhengfei's Huawei overtook Apple to become the second largest manufacturer of smartphones after Samsung. Like any other company, Huawei has also faced challenges. Under the Trump administration, accusations and actions against Huawei have increased substantially, particularly over national security concerns. On January 28, 2019, the U.S. Department of Justice formally announced financial fraud charges against Huawei's chief financial officer Meng Wanzhou. In response, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police arrested Meng on a provisional U.S. extradition request for fraud and conspiracy to commit fraud in order to circumvent U.S. sanctions against Iran. But it goes without saying that a man who was rejected and cheated by many, who suffered a personal loss, started something at 44 that had changed technology for years to come. Until next time, have a good one.